Hello, everybody. Welcome from CMS. Uh, Professor Jamila, would you like to please start with the introduction and then we can go ahead? Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, let me into, uh, introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Meher Ali Shah and Dr. Bilal Kiani. Uh, both of them did their PhD with CERN experiment in Switzerland. Um, uh, Dr. Bilal is working with the drift tubes. Uh, he's doing a postdoc there. Uh, his PhD is uh, with uh, INFN from Italy. And Dr. Meher Ali Shah, he did his PhD from Kaide Azam University. And he is responsible mainly for the resistive plate chambers uh, of the uh, CMS detector. So both of them are very much expert uh, in their field and they will introduce us to the CMS experiment at CERN, how um, it works. I will not take a long time because, you know, um, we have uh, people who are totally new to this kind of experience. So uh, it's um, exciting for them to see uh, what is happening there in, in, the, uh, in this large experimental large hadron collider. Uh, I will mute myself and I will open the speaker. So when I, I will do the thumbs up, you can start speaking. Uh, so uh, let me mute myself and I will do the speaker on. Okay, ma'am, you can hear us, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello, everyone. So now uh, we're gonna give you a very brief introduction to our experiment. So this, you might already, uh, you, you know some details about this experiment. So this is the organization that we are working here with is called CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. CERN is the French abbreviation. And the experiment that we are, uh, the, 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 I mean, uh, which is ongoing here, which is like, uh, 100 nations all together, they are uh, uh, working all together to, to make this happen. So this is called LHC, Large Hadron Collider. So maybe, yes, please, Zoltan is going to uh, share you some photos so you can, you can easily understand uh, the, 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 the experiment. So like you see this image. So here on the right, the upper part, you see this is the Switzerland. You can see the Geneva Lake there. You can see just next to LACB, this Geneva Airport. So now you see this is 27 kilometer tunnel, this yellow ring. So the upper part is in the Switzerland and the left part that you see, uh, this CMS and all this uh, lower part of the picture, this is France, French area, and just next to the Jura Mountains. So this is 27 kilometer tunnel. This tunnel is 100 meter below the ground level. And uh, in this tunnel, like, like you can see here now clearly, so we are 100 meter below. And in this 27 kilometer tunnel, there are uh, there is the world most powerful accelerator in, uh, built and installed. So which means it can move particles with a tremendous speed. So the particles that we are moving in this accelerator are protons you are of course all familiar with the protons uh, and the speed that with which these particles are moved inside this um, accelerator is very close to speed of light 99.999996 of speed of light which means one lakh one lakh 86000 miles a second so now you can imagine that in this ring they go 11000 times in one second and then we collide these particles at four points. So there are four experiments. So that we have two beams going one in clockwise direction and other the counterclockwise direction. And then at four points, these beams are collided together. So this is, you can see the center is the photo of the accelerator. You can see the two um, tubes inside. And this is a very marvelous machine. This is like, so inside we have, in these tubes, pure vacuum is 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 like um, it's called um, uh, ultra high vacuum. Yeah, right? yep. yeah, yeah. It's ten it, to the minus eleven. Ten, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so it's, 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 so because when our particles move, we don't want them to interact with any other particles on the way. They go in vacuum, and now because it's a circular collider, 
So you need very, very powerful magnet to bend the beam in this circular trajectory. So it means you, you need powerful magnets. And magnet, you know, the simple principle, you need a very high current which generates magnetic field. Now to attain this high current, then you have issues, resistance, heat. So here we are using super conductors. And superconductors, you know, are the conductors which conduct electricity with zero resistance. Now to make certain material superconductor, you need to cool them down to a very, very, very low temperature, minus 271 degrees. And this we attain here by cooling them down with the liquid helium, because liquid helium has that temperature. So all this tube is filled with the liquid helium, which cool them down to this temperature, minus 271 degrees, colder than the outer space. And that's where they become superconducting and they generate this magnetic field of eight Tesla, which is used to bend the beam. And then this beam is collided together at a very, very high energy. This is the highest energy ever achieved in any experiment in the world. And here, this is how the conditions which were there at the time of the Big Bang, at those conditions are created. And then we study different particles. Uh, so we study matter at those conditions which were there at the time of the beginning of the universe. So this is like a very, very quick <clears throat> summary. Bilal? Just to add uh, one point here, imagine on one hand, uh, as Meher explained, that uh, we have the like coolest temperature ever possible. We are reaching like uh, near to absolute zero. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, if you imagine that we are colliding these particles nearly with the speed of the light. So when we have these uh, uh, the points where the particles are colliding, the temperatures and the energies are so higher. So it's sort of like uh, we are reaching the, the, or we are creating conditions similar to what happened at the time of Big Bang. So it's quite interesting for me that uh, in the same place or in the same uh, area, let's say, we are reaching to absolute, to extreme temperature at the same time. Exactly, exactly. See. So, so exactly. Um, so now, I mean, uh, we will continue discussion. So I guess uh, what we can do is, um, so the, the plan for today is we gonna, uh, so now uh, we have, we are split into two teams, myself and Zoltan here. Uh, Zoltan is, and Noemi, you can see. So me and Zoltan are gonna stay here in the control room and our special team, you can see Noemi, Bilal, <laughs> so you see, that's Noemi and Bilal. So they are now uh, going to show you quickly the control room and then they will go 100 meter down and then you can see what are the safety protocols. They, they have all the trainings and special permissions. They will go down with the safety equipment and they are going to show you this marvelous, our CMS detector, which we will talk now. It's, it's a gigantic machine. It's a 14,000 tons heavy machine which reads uh, uh, more than like, um, there are more around 1 billion channels where we read different data. So this is the machine in the heart of this machine, we collide particles and uh, uh, sorry, just to show you a quick uh, uh, observation. Do you see Bilal is handing me his watch and his wallet probably also, because now they are going down and we have a very, high magnetic field uh, down. So th they will show you. That's this true. is the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the... that's working yeah. like you would expect in gravitational field hanging down. Exactly. Please put this information away. Yeah. We are going to we are going to change this. Exactly. Field. So if you take the credit card, the watch or things like this in that, uh, I mean, they, they, they may get damaged. So that's why now uh, they're going with this careful, like uh, with the with, with the all these precautions and plus now imagine like when we are working if there is an uh, of course in collisions no access it's not possible it's, nobody can go but when there is there is no collision happening no radiation but magnetic field so you have if you want to work there you have to go with very with the special i mean this uh, non-magnetic components otherwise you know everything is dancing and touching each other so so it, it, it's a huge it's a, it's a very strong magnetic field so so the idea is Bilal and uh, Noemi will show you the underground, uh, our experimental cavern, the real detector, which is now getting ready for the next four years for this uh, collision operation. It was three years 
technical stop where a massive maintenance campaign was launched and a lot of new detectors were installed. The services for the future detectors were installed. So you can imagine like this is a machine when you are dealing with a machine like this, such a gigantic, such um, complex, you need a lot of time. That's why three years for us were not enough, you see, for, for, for all this maintenance. But there was a huge uh, maintenance campaign performed and thousands of the detectors were repaired and I guess now we are ready. So let, let, let's get over to Bilal and Noemi, and we will continue discussion about the CMS, about his physics, about his purposes, how it was built. So we will continue the discussions. So please. Thank you, Mahar. So uh, I'm going to give you a brief uh, introduction of the, uh, of the control room first, and then we will go underground. And we are going to visit the uh, the two caverns that we uh, we will we will visit today. So uh, this is the CMS control room in front of us, and uh, you can see a lot of screens here, and there is a person sitting here. So the idea is that uh, uh, when we have proton collisions, for example, and we are collecting the data, we have to make sure that uh, the operations are going smoothly and the data taking is fine, and there are no problems going on with that. And we have a whole central shift crew team that are responsible for uh, for making sure that the, the, the data collection is going on fine. And also on this side, you see a lot of other screens. Uh, this part of the control room is responsible for, uh, let's say, making sure the safety of the equipment and also controlling the different parameters of the detector. For example, if you want to switch on or switch off uh, any part of the uh, part of the detector this can be done from these control uh, screens here also we have some uh, let's say uh, sensors screens here which uh, in case there is a, uh, for example any problem uh, here we can uh, we can for example monitor them and we can take uh, necessary action uh, uh, whatever is needed so usually we have uh, uh, the technical shifter and the shift leader here, most of the time whenever the detector is open. And also during the data taking, there are three additional shifters called trigger, DAQ, and DQM shifters that currently are not here because of the COVID restrictions. So now I'm moving to, to the other part of the, of the control room that you can see here. There are other screens as well, people sitting, working. They are basically monitoring and controlling the other uh, uh, sub detectors and, uh, and 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 sub detector means actually uh, CMS is built of uh, let's say several different kinds of layers. I can uh, show you. I can show you, for example, this is the this is the model of the CMS uh, experiment, and uh, as you can see that this experiment is like an onion. So you have different layers and each different layer is correspond to or named as a uh, as a sub detector so starting from inside out we have the we have the tracker uh, then we have the calorimeters and then outside the calorimeters we have this uh, the solenoid magnet that is uh, producing a 3.8 tesla one of the powerful mag uh, magnets in a in a in a detectors that can ever be and then outside the magnet uh, as you see in this uh, red layers these are the muon systems and uh, uh, there are three different three or four different technologies of the muon system that are implied in these uh, in these uh, uh, in this muon system so now we are into this uh, we are in this in in this area we are going to enter uh, for going down uh, to to go down we have to we have to use a we have to use a uh, let's say a dosimeter this makes sure that whenever uh, there are, we are entering a radiation radiation zone, this is going to, so whenever we are entering a radiation uh, zone, this is going to, let's say, measure the amount of dose we receive, uh, uh, we receive uh, during this period. And there is a certain limit uh, that is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, we have to follow and this uh, and to make sure the safety of the personnel going down we cannot exceed this limit per year so okay. 
So now uh, we are basically entering uh, into the area uh, where we have this elevator. And you can see that the elevator is at minus three. And so there are three levels underground and the minus three is the lowest most level, let's say. And it is at minus 97 meters. So you can imagine that we are going to go down quite, uh, quite deep, let's say. And uh, now, since we press the button, the lift is coming back up. So one thing about this elevator is that this is like a pressurized cabin, and uh, this is supposed uh, this is uh, let's say the most secure zone underground. And if there is uh, evacuation needed, usually we always rush towards the elevator, rush toward the elevator, and try to exit from the elevator, because uh, you can imagine that climbing the uh, the stairs all the way from 97 meters to, to the surface, it's not so easy uh, in case of emergency or any kind of hazard. One thing I would like to uh, show you guys that uh, there is a sign here that says danger magnetic field. And uh, as we already mentioned that uh, that the magnetic field of the CMS is switched on. That's why I removed my watch. Uh, so this magnetic field, this magnet is made up of, let's say the superconductors. It produces a 3.8. Okay, I'm taking over because now Naomi and Bilal entered the elevator and they're going 100 meter down. So then the, the network is interrupted. So what Bilal was showing you that um because of this um uh, solenoid magnet that we have inside the detector which we use to bend particles in order to study their properties their momentum energy you know professor jamila she worked a lot here uh, with our experiment and also with another experiment with alice and she can of course uh, explain in detail all these physics processes but this is the world most powerful solenoid magnet uh, in which we use to bend the charged particles in order to study their properties like you can see here. So in the middle of the, um, the this machine, so that is the solenoid magnet and charged particles, they are then bended. And this is how we uh, study their properties. Like you can see this blue line here, you see, this is the track of the muon particle. So you see, because the solenoidal feed, so different direction before, this is the magnet. So inside you see a different direction of the curvature and outside different because it's a solenoidal feed. So it changes the direction. So now you see, and uh, other than the technical part, imagine like building uh, such a thousands of tons heavy machine, then uh, digging. This was another like um, big uh, part of the project to, and then there was the water flowing. I mean, you have to, the water was frozen and then digging was done. And it took like uh, decades, you know, to, 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 to do all that. And then uh, of course, then imagine like this huge thousands of tons machines, uh, it's not easy to install and then to calibrate them like you don't want even one centimeter of some um, misalignment. So all these things are like very carefully designed, executed, and now being handled. And now uh, when Bilal and Nomi are there, they will show you there are our detectors in 13 parts. And then you can imagine like uh, time to time we have to work on detectors inside. So then we have to open the detectors. Now this is another mechanism opening thousands of tons heavy machine and then closing and not losing alignment for even few millimeters. So all these things are uh, handled with uh, teams of experts and very carefully. And then there are procedures to reassure that there is no impact on uh, any, any of the parameters. And then uh, regarding the safety, like Bilal showed you all the details because of course safety is the first priority of CERN. So you can see there are dedicated trainings, courses, safety equipment. Uh, and then uh, inside we have fire extinguishers, this uh, self-rescue mask. And uh, now Bilal and Nomi are going down. So they have done many of the courses and they are completely aware like what to do in case of uh, emergency, what are the actions. And then there are teams that stand by the fire brigade, the rescue teams, which immediate, which can intervene in minutes in case of any um, incident. And similarly, 
um, all this, uh, for example, this keeping the pressurized, uh, this, this elevator. So all these are like, there are layers of protections, you know, for safety, because safety is the major concern. So now is a good moment because in few weeks, detectors, the cavern will be closed for a few years. So time to time, there will be some access when there will be some technical stops, when we, uh, you know, stop the beam or magnet. But you can imagine like, uh, this is not an easy task. So for example, if we are working and if we see like there is a major problem during the collisions, then a lot of coordination is required. So then we CMS will ask LIC, there is another control room, 24 hours, there are experts available. And then uh, we need to request them, then they have to coordinate with the other detectors and then they have to stop the beam, which is a big, I mean, uh, decision. You can imagine like um, uh, every second here is so precious because just to give you an amount of the data we are collecting in like one second. So at the moment, in terms of numbers, not going into the, our, our, uh, the, the terminologies we use, but in terms of numbers, we are colliding 100 billion protons at a time uh, from two sides. And, and we collide them very fast. In every, in one second, we collide these protons 40 million times. So then of course, out of which then we record only the interesting events. And this is another now, uh, Noemi and Bilal, once they are down, they will show they are you. Down, they, they got, um, oh, let me just show sure. myself. So um, they are down, uh, but they got a, a slight technical issue. The 4G is missing down in the uh, cavern. They will turn on the Wi-Fi. They are already I see there. they are already back, perfect. Uh, probably the, the resolution will be worse, but uh, I so. apologize for it in sure. advance. So no, no problem, no problem. So, so you see, you hear us? Yes, Bilal, now we can hear you. And now please, please show us. Bilal and uh, Nomi are gonna show you the services, Kevin. Please, Bilal, yeah. over to you. Okay, so they sorry, are on the uh, we, we had a communication loss uh, in the elevator and uh, now we are back again. So we are reporting from, uh, let's say, um, around uh, 88 meters, 80 meters uh, in the CMS counting room. So the room, uh, this room, as you can see that we have several different kind of equipment here. And uh, these equipments are mainly, let's say the power system uh, equipments. For example, that red tracks over there, you see, these are the high voltage frames. This means that our detectors are operating on certain different kind of high voltage. And uh, this uh, needs to be provided and uh, uh, maintained in a, in a, with a specific kind of equipment that you can see over here. Then coming uh, into the next, these are the optical fibers that you see coming on different kind of boards. And these are, these are blinking the, uh, the LED lights over there. So in CMS, basically we collect data and this data is somehow converted and digitized and uh, in the form of optical data. And that is transmitted here in these boards. And in these boards, we make this decision. These are very intelligent boards. We can call them as the brain of CMS and that would not be wrong. That uh, we make this decision uh, whether a, 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 an event or a, uh, or a kind of data that is coming here through this fiber is good for us or not. In this brain, we make this decision and this decision is sort of like, we call this a trigger mechanism, whether to keep an event or uh, discard it. For example, something that is not, com the, the, com the information is com not complete or it is missing in some, some areas, that kind of data somehow is not very useful for us but we keep, uh, we discard this and keep the good quality of the data where we have all the information, we have all the hits from different layers of the CMS and we can, uh, uh, we can consider this data as, as useful. So moving on, moving on to the, uh, to the next part of the, of the underground facility, let's say, where we have the actual uh, uh, experimental cavern. <laughs> that cavern is called the experimental cavern and this ca cavern is known as the service cavern. As you can uh, imagine by the name that this 
this is the place where we have most of the services like high voltage trigger system other cooling mechanism and stuff like that and this place is divided by the other other part that we are going to go there very soon with a lot of concrete in between uh, and the idea is that uh, we want to keep our uh, let's say experiment and the services area separate in case for example uh, uh, during the collisions we have to uh, come down here and work on our services that is needed to maintain uh, or needed to operate the CMS. Uh, they are here and it's possible to come here and work on them. While in the experimental cavern, uh, during the collision, the access is restricted and it's not possible to go inside. So coming here, this is just uh, to give a demonstration of the safe, safety equipment uh, or the safety trainings that uh, one must perform in order to go and come down here and work uh, in this environment. One of the most important training that everybody should do is this uh, self-rescue mask training. And this is needed because in case of any oxygen deficiency hazard, for example, we have low oxygen, this helps us in breathing. So you need to close your nose, put it in your mouth and breathe in into the bag. And uh, also you can put the, uh, the glasses, for example, to save your eyes. And this kind of equipment is readily available in all the uh, facilities uh, underground in these cabinets. And uh, for example, in any case of emergency, uh, one can take them out and use them. Uh, and it's, it's relatively easier uh, also to use this equipment, it's not very. Uh, so this is the sign here, uh, and uh, you see a red light over there. So clearly from this sign, you can see that uh, this is the sign for oxygen deficiency. So uh, if this light is blinking, this means that uh, uh, we need to take out uh, uh, the, um, the self-rescue mask from, from these cabinets, and we need to put uh, them on. Uh, as soon as possible. Apart from that, we have some other equipment uh, that is called the uh, hand foot monitor. Uh, in case of uh, any exit from the radiation zone, let's say, we need to uh, measure uh, the radiation in our hands and feet uh, uh, in order to, for example, um, see if you are going above the thresholds or not. So coming on to this passage, actually this is like a crossway between uh, the LHC tunnel and the CMS area. Behind this red door is the actual LHC tunnel that we saw uh, that uh, we, uh, that Meher explained you. Uh, unfortunately, we're not allowed to go there, but it kinds of look like this, if you want to see a picture of it. So that is the, the, the view of LHC. LHC machine itself. But right now we are going to enter into the experimental cavern. Uh, Meher, maybe you can take it for, for a few minutes so that we can enter here and then uh, we'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, In sure. principle, you should stay online, but we will see. Actually, we lost you. We, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So now you see Bilal and Noemi, they are now uh, entering to the experimental cavern. And there are two. Bilal, you have to put it in this slot, this slot. Okay. So now. Um, yeah, that one. So, so our experimental cavern is you can consider it, it like uh, like a five story building. So now you see they are going to enter from a certain level, and then they will take the stairs to go down, and then uh, once. So now they are Bilal is entered the experimental cavern, and then there's a big fire door. And then they're going to enter the third floor of the cavern and then you will see so now you see the system is um, detecting their credentials checking if they have all the safety courses done if they have all the access granted all the permissions are done that's way so so and then imagine like during the collisions so this system never lets anybody enter uh, so this is the place like you can go even during the collision before this door 
but you can never cross this door once there are collisions and there is a radiation inside. So now they're gonna enter uh, in a moment from the next fire door, and then you will see the the the, the this our gigantic CMS detector. Yeah. They have and, to reconnect from the cavern. Okay, so yeah. So, yeah. so, so now they are entering, and they will reconnect. So now um, on 24th of March, this cavern is gonna be closed. For now, all these 13 wheels, which I told you, um, which, which, in which we have different detectors, and now they are all together. You will see them now. This is, becomes like a um, 25 meter long and 15 meter high, like a cylinder. And inside we have these uh, different detector technologies. We have silicon detectors, we have um different calorimetry we have muon detectors gaseous detectors so so, so uh, they, they will give you a detail now but now you will see it like closed shielded the magnet is right in the in the in the in the in the middle of the detector there are five uh these again superconducting coils which which generate this uh, uh solenoidal magnetic field and then you will see the beam pipe which enters from this tunnel which is 27 kilometer and at the entrance of the tunnel, there are quadrupole magnets in order to focus and squeeze the beam, you know, to, to, to be precise. And then in the heart of center of this detector, these beams are collided together. And so this is where, let's say, the big bang occurs, the conditions which were there, the energy which was there at the time of the big bang. So at those energy in the center of this machine, these collisions happened, and then millions and millions of particles are created. And then it's the challenge for the physicist, Professor Jamila can, uh, maybe she talks a lot about it because she has worked a lot on this, uh, several physics um, channels, studies during her uh, PhD and postdoc. And um, then this is the challenge. This is like, you can imagine like, it's trying to find, for example, one particle, for example, Higgs boson, for which Nobel prize was awarded. So finding Higgs in such billions of particles is like um, is like trying to find a needle in the in in the in a in a desert. So you have huge huge background. Oh, okay, I guess now we our team is uh, in the cavern. So let let's go to them to show you the first the most exciting stuff. Yes, Bilal, please. All right, everyone. So we are back again from the from the experimental cavern. So this is the this is the face of the experiment that you can see. So moving along, so right there in front of you is the CMS experiment. One thing you will immediately notice that this thing in my hand is like flying above in the air. So which Zoltan was mentioning earlier to you on the surface that because of the gravity, it was all the way down, but now you can clearly see that how strong is the magnetic field here? Although it is a solenoid, I mean, the, the, uh, the magnetic field outside the solenoid is supposed to be you know, decreasing quite fast, but uh, you can imagine if it's inside uh, is 3.8 Tesla and still we can, we can, we can uh, feel very strong magnetic field here. This means that uh, for a visitor, for a person, who is uh, having any implants, for example. Uh, um, yeah. So now Amy gave me this uh, paper clips and you can see that how they are, you know, we can clearly, uh, let's say, mark the whole magnetic field with this, uh, with this paper clips. So, uh, so for the people who, ha who are having, for example, medical implants or pacemakers or any kind of equipment that can you know be affected with the magnetic field uh, for them working in this kind of environment is simply not possible so that is why we also during the visits and also for the people who have this kind of uh, 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 um, let's say pacemakers or medical implants they are they are forbidden let's say to come downstairs in this in this area because clearly uh, the magnetic field is too strong for this so, so I can feel a very strong force to hold this thing because it is really, really, you can see high above in the air.
and it's not easy to i i have to put a lot of force let's say to keep it uh, in this position so this is the kind of equipment that is needed for the for operating the cms for example we have some uh, uh, high voltage and low voltage system here of course uh, these equipments are designed in a way so that they are not affected by the magnetic field so they are not let's say the normal equipment that you use in your in daily life or the industry so they are a very specialized things that are designed and now we are going on the other side of the So there is probably the network issue in the experimental cavern. So let's wait for Bilal and Naomi in the meantime. So you see right into the center. Okay. Center of the of the experiment. Hello, are you saying something, Meher? Now it's okay. We lost you for a moment, but now you are back. Yeah. So the protons are colliding right uh, into the into the middle of this uh, this experiment. Uh, unfortunately, right now the experiment is closed since we are getting ready for the run three or let's say for the future data taking uh, uh, in June. So right now only you can see the see the close part of the or the end part of the experiment where we have this uh, huge iron shielding. These orange parts are also shielding. Shielding is something that protect us from uh, let's say from the from the radiations that are coming out of these collisions. So uh, hold the experiment and also the cavern is properly shielded, let's say, uh, to avoid any kind of uh, uh, radiation getting outside. Can you go down, please? So we are getting to the lower parts of the, of the experiment. So you can imagine the size of the CMS experiment. It's like almost 25, 30 meters high here, right in front of us. So it's not a small experiment. The weight is also quite uh, huge. Uh, the point is that uh, uh, still the CMS stands for compact neon solenoid. I mean, this experiment in comparison with the experiment, with the other experiment on the LHC that is Atlas, they are both journal purpose detectors, which means that they can perform a variety of different uh, different jobs. And uh, uh, what CMS and Atlas, uh, what CMS can do, Atlas can also do and vice versa more or less. But this experiment is designed in a way uh, that uh, everything is joined together very well. And it's called compact, uh, it's, it's called the compact detector while on the, on the, uh, other way, the Atlas experiment is like twice the size of this one. Okay, so now you see Bilal and Noemi, they are going down. So because I told you it's, it's, it's a 25 meter long uh, detector. So you can maybe notice these small joints between the red uh, these disks that's in front of you. So now all these are the separate pieces which are now yeah. joined together and inside in, in which we have different types of detectors. So uh, Lal is can, trying to speak. You can clearly see that how strong is the magnetic field. I can also feel in my feet because I'm wearing a safety shoes and the front part of the shoes is made up of metal. And I can feel it that it is getting basically stuck to this, uh, to, 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 to this metal.
and this is a iron you um, let's say the piece of iron that you can imagine that uh, how strong is the magnetic field we are feeling here So, right now, what Noemi is showing you is this uh, elevator shaft. Let's say that's the shaft where the CMS actually the CMS was built on the surface, and then it was lowered through this uh, huge gap that you see over here, and uh, this uh, goes all the way up to surface that you can see the surface light uh, coming out of it. For the moment, everything is open, and you can see that. Uh, 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 the surface uh, above us. Uh, when the data taking will happen, we will close everything. And uh, uh, since right now we are going through some time period where we need to bring things in or out of the experiment, and this is the only way to do to do it. I don't know, Meher, if you want to add something. Oh, no, sure. Thanks, Bilal. So, like you can see, uh, this shaft that Bilal and Naomi just showed you. So, all these thirteen pieces which I mentioned, these were so the detectors were made by different collaborations in different parts of the world. They were then brought here in at the surface, just next to the hall, which is next to us now, next to next to the control room, and then they were built together in these thirteen thousands of tons heavy disc, and through this shaft which you just saw these 13 discs were lowered down and now you can imagine this was a very special crane and it took like um, what i understood from the seniors it took like uh, 18 hours for the first disc to lower down and then all this careful operation was done with a very special uh, crane uh, bigger than the buildings and then they were moved lower down and moved inside the cavern and now they are closed and now inside the cavern, we have two different cranes Oops. because you can imagine like when we work with the, on the height 20, 15 meter or something. So you really need special working platforms. But now you can see it's a real fun for Bilal and Noemi there because it's a quite high magnetic field. So you see it's not, um, <laughs> it's, these are not uh, normal circumstances. You can see this, uh, this piece dancing and it's now quite horizontal. And it, it's really dancing. This is really fun when you have it in hand. It's like, you know, going mm -hmm. in all directions. And it's, it's, it's like uh, quite, an, quite an experience. It's, it's highly unique. Yeah, yeah. So actually from the camera image, you wouldn't expect anything weird. Exactly. But uh, once, the once spanner... you are there, these are very special feelings. Exactly. Trust me. I they, mean, don't, this... they don't have any biological. Uh, uh, physiological feeling feeling yes but of course if you Physi if you have an indicator then it's fine exactly you won't feel anything uh, Meher, now naomi just explained me that uh, we cannot go any closer with the camera because the camera basically flips off into into the opposite direction so we because of the magnetic field so we cannot move any any further than this so you see you see all these incredible experiences so these are not the normal circumstances. And now imagine, uh, you see, it stick to the, the this um, iron yoke. And this iron yoke is the feet of the detector, which is now holding these thousands of tons heavy yeah. uh, weight above it. And now you can imagine uh, moving is another like yes. uh, major part. So you can see this orange color uh, jacks down this. So these are the one which are used. Um, this is the, uh, there's a special pushback and hydraulic system which moves these discs, you know, when we are working. And this was happening for the last uh, three years. And now finally, this detector is getting back to its final position, uh, getting ready for the, again, uh, for this massive Cullian um, operation for to take the physics data at this uh, enormous energies for the next four years. So Meher, I think Just we can take some question. questions. Yes, sure. Yeah, exactly. sure. And uh, about the experiment, about uh, the magnet or anything. And uh, this, uh, uh, Jamila, maybe you can take over and uh, ask uh, some questions from the audi audience. Sure, 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 uh, ma'am. 
if there are any questions and then maybe in one two minutes we can just summarize the overall purpose just to share like the um, uh, the, the the physics purposes and this i mean yep. all uh, or if you prefer we can do it now in a couple of minutes and then I we think we should do it right now right now right jamila needs to mute the uh sure sure speaker. so ma'am give me just uh, two minutes please so we just summarize because few questions we already know i mean that why we are doing all this and what is the major purpose so just just to quickly summarize and then we go for all the, the open question answer sessions so zoltan is it possible to share one picture with the universe uh, i send from, you from your yes yes yeah, okay that's, yeah that's then then it's problem. easy to explain the uh, i think the last yours, slide yeah, exactly yeah, please just go to the last one and then cool this yes, one this, this one. one yes <laughs> this is my favorite picture ma'am jumila probably knows it so uh very quickly to summarize so now i get uh, the most of the questions more. in our mind in your mind so the questions are that why are we doing the why the human beings 100 nations all together are building this world most complex machine what are the i mean actual purposes so very quickly to give you a uh, share with you the i mean the story of the universe so now you see this picture at the end this cone the big size of the cone so we are so this is our let's say universe now the universe we are living in and there are uh billions of galaxies more than 7 billion galaxies smaller more than 4 around 420 billion bigger galaxies that we have already seen with the telescopes and all these are going away from each other so universe is expanding and the temperature of the universe is going down now if you go back in this cone it means do your universe was um smaller and hotter you go back even smaller and hotter now if you just keep on going back if you go 13.8 billion years back which is the age of our universe every all this universe was within one point so then here at this point this big explosion called as big bang occurred and this universe let's say came into being and this whole process started and then later at some around 5 billion years ago this earth was formed and life was started you know all this uh, so this is the age of the universe this is like the full story of our universe now all this story we understand in pieces so there are different theories which explain different um phenomena which occurred at different points but we don't know the full story so what we know is we are made of of matter matter has protons inside electrons moving okay this we understand up to a certain extent but then we know so this is the stuff that say we know that we know but there is a stuff we know that we don't know for example dark matter so in the universe we see there is for sure a matter all the phenomena happening around shows that there is a huge amount of like mass there but we cannot see it because it doesn't glow it doesn't emit photon like stars you see because they emit photons you see them but there are many other objects like stars but we don't see them but we are 100% sure they are there and they are four or five times more than our visible matter this is what we call dark matter so this is something we know is there but we don't know how it is similarly we live in a three dimensional world so we see three dimensions x y z and time for example the fourth one uh, uh, just just hold a second maybe nomi want to say something yeah nomi please yeah please unmute no i mean unmute oh no or maybe they're just they okay. just coming just on. coming okay okay sorry sorry for the interruption so so you see we cannot imagine more but in theory you can write many directions and there are theories which work with more dimensions up to 10 dimensions so 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 all i mean all these extra dimensions and then what is the fate of our universe where we are heading to uh will it will will it always be always be like uh, expanding or there will be some then contraction and eventually i mean so all these are open questions you know and then similarly this is we were talking about matter anti uh, matter and uh, dark matter but there is anti matter so all our best understanding we know that there should be an equal amount of anti matter created at the beginning of the universe otherwise it's not possible but where is anti matter no idea so 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 all these questions so when i was like young i was always thinking or maybe one day professor jamila will build a time machine and 
she will put us in and we will go back and we will understand everything but then we understood according to the einstein uh, best uh, i mean uh, understanding we have of the universe that we can build a time machine which can take you to future but you cannot build a time machine which takes you back to past this universe is made like this and so that's why the only possibility was to build a lab and create those conditions which were there at this beginning point and study matter at those energies so this is the best way to try to explore the the secrets I'm of sorry um, I, have, i have to interrupt you because there is another class uh, sure, and sure, people sure. are waiting we are outside uh, we are can, can we close and um, thank you very much and let me give you comment that people enjoyed this uh, demonstration of magnetic field very much so i will close things because we have to give room to the next uh, people sure, okay sure, thank sure, you sure 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 thank you thank you thank you chacha